What's up, friends of 1% Better? So, before we get into the 100 books I've read in 2017, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas indeed from Australia. Uh, And the next thing is the book club. So, I am relaunching the book club on goodreads.com. So, for those of you who don't know, it's basically this big Facebook version, but for book lovers, where you can track your books, track what you're reading, read reviews, write reviews, uh, and it's it's got a forum and a message board there. So, that's where the club is being run. It is absolutely free. However, with that said, this book club is not for the faint of heart. We will be reading a book every month together, uh, but the, the books are challenging, So and they have the potential to challenge the foundations of their lives. Most of them are classic books, so they're not going to be your everyday self-development book like The One Thing by Gary Keller or The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Me, personally, I've moved past that for now. I found that all the success principles started repeating themselves, so I'm more into the classic literature, and it's just amazing how you can connect with someone's ideas through actual storytelling rather than just like the bullet points. Anyway, there's a time and place for that. So if you can and you're ready for a challenge, you can go sign up for a Goodreads account in the description below. I've got a link there and then I have a link to the group. So feel free to join me on my journey next year. The next thing is the podcast. Yes, I know you've been waiting for a long time. Uh, Next year, January, we're launching. So I'm 13 episodes through. I've edited them. I'm just going to pop them up, do the launch, ask you sweet and kindly for some reviews on iTunes so we can rise up the ranks. And yeah, I I do hope you enjoy it. So it's coming finally. Uh, Without further ado, you're here because you want to see the 100 books I've read. So I suppose we'll get into it. But make sure you watch it all the way to the end because if you're going to buy books based on simply the books I've read, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get angry at you. So you need to know why I'm going to be angry at you at the end of the video. <laughs> so without further ado, uh, let's, let's get to it. All right. So Goodreads has done this new little presentation thing. So this is my year in books, 2017. I read 30,178 pages across 109 books. The shortest book I read was Lying by Sam Harris. Now that is more of an essay. Uh, but, you know, it's on my my, my my tracking list anyway. The longest book uh, says it was Ayn Rand by Atlas Shrugged. I should probably take this off because I didn't actually finish this one. This one was a real motherfucker to finish. I reckon I got 300 pages through and 200 of those pages were just forcing myself through it. Um, personally, I think I, I, I would get a lot more value in terms of my time expenditure and what I get from it um, just by reading maybe a 100-page essay on what Ayn Rand was actually trying to say in this horribly boring, terrible, crappy book that I never want to read again in my life. <laughs> the average length? Well, okay. 1.5 million people enjoyed Slaughterhouse 5. Uh, the average length, 279 pages across all the books I read, probably more like 275 because of Atlas Shrugged. The least popular book I read was Influence by Dan Locke. Um, now, Dan Locke, love the guy to bits. That book deserves so many, you know, so much more popularity. I mean, I suppose there's nothing groundbreaking, but, you know, I've, I'm feel connected to Dan Locke, like he's he's not not far away in terms of degrees of separation from me. So I love his personality too. Great book. Average rating, 3.8. Pretty average. <laughs> uh, highest rated book on Goodreads that I read this year was The Body Keeps the Score by Bessel van der Kolk. Um, my buddy Vic introduced me to this book. It's got a 4.62 average rating across like hundreds of readers. So I thought that was insane. I had to read it. I think I gave it four stars personally. Uh, but basically the message I got was get the hell out of your head uh, and into your body. I mean, there's a lot of trauma stored and pent up into our bodies. And this actually gets kind of sciencey. So it's actually uh, taught me to take Elliot Hulse's bioenergetic stuff more seriously. I think they were getting onto something there. Uh, my first review of the year. This was for Surely You're Joking, Mr. Feynman. I gave this book five stars. Incredible book. Um, so as you can see, absolute gold. Mr. Feynman is super intelligent and he knows how to tell an entertaining story. The way his mind works is unreal. This recommendation was from Tim Ferriss and many other influencers lived up to the hype. I'd recommend it to anyone interested in higher levels of thinking and those looking for a laugh. Brilliant. Okay, 
So, I don't know why we've got two copies of Surely You're Joking, Mr. Feynman here. It's something to do with the tracking. But anyway, uh, the story of the human body. This is in no particular order. Uh, let's go through. Um, this was fantastic. At the time, I didn't realize. Uh, this this goes into the story of civilization and how our bodies and, and functions are just maladapted to current society. And it's only after my existential crisis halfway through the year that I, ugh, excuse me, realized the value of this book. Um, highly recommend reading. Um, just, just ridiculous. The One Thing by Gary Keller. Uh, I used this for the first six months before I had my, my big crisis. Uh, and basically the idea is, what's the one thing you can do today that will make everything easier or irrelevant? Everything else easier or irrelevant. So just focus on one thing, man. Uh, it's what all the successful people have done. The Miracle Morning, uh, I've kept this up for a long time now, even before I read the book. Uh, you know, I did like, I don't know, 100 days of cold showers straight, and then every every week or every two weeks, I'd add something to my morning routine. But the whole idea is 60 minutes, divide it up into like 10-minute blocks, and focus on one thing. So whether that be reading, then you do some exercise, and you do some meditation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There's nothing particularly groundbreaking about it. Uh, and I know a lot of people that have strayed from the Miracle Morning where they've just dropped their routines altogether or they've just wanted more flexibility in their routine. So Miracle Morning just starts as a starting point if you want to create a morning routine. You don't have to follow it strictly like how Elrod says in the book. Reinvent Yourself by James Altucher. Uh, love the guy. What else can I say? He's got frolly, frickly hair. He's made millions, lost millions. He's from New York. It's an amazing podcast, the James Altucher Show. Uh, and the dude, the way his mind works, he's very curious like myself. So that's why I resonate with him so much. And every book he, he, he brings out now, I read. Uh, he's just a fantastic. He's very blatant. Uh, he's just no bullshit. And he tells it how it is. Short sentences. Love it. Next up, when I was working at my job, I hated at the start of this year. Uh, I read the game during my lunch breaks. So I was only a bloody guy reading a book in the in the lunchroom every lunchtime. And, uh, or smoker, they call it here in Australia. Um, and this one introduced me for the first time to game and PUA. I didn't know what these things were until the start of this year. Uh, I'm, I'm 22 and yeah, I've, I've only recently began looking at this shit. Uh, in the, at, the, at the time, I was in a relationship, and, you know, I openly read uh, the game in front of my girlfriend, and uh, <laughs> luckily, she's pretty understanding. I'm just like, you know, it's, it, I'm curious. What of it? What of it, mate? Um, so, if you've never looked into the dating scene or, or read any material on learning how, to, how girls work in the dating scene and all that shit, then this is a great place to start. However, it is quite outdated. So, a lot of the Real Social Dynamics guy will teach stuff that's a lot different to this. Like you may have heard of Mystery Method. Uh, it's a very old school sort of outer game type type method and all these pickup lines. But now these days it's more about natural game, but it's a good starting point. Next up, The Happiness Project by Gretchen Rubin. Ah, uh, this book was terrible. You know, the concept was good. Like this chick, Gretchen Rubin, every month she'd, she'd do something that that was designed to, meant to make her happier or something. She was just experimenting. I thought that's great. But, you know, it was just, I don't know. I, I didn't enjoy it. Like, there was no conclusions. And the whole premise of the book is kind of flawed. Because if you focus on happiness, you don't actually attain it. But then again, I mean, the experiment idea is cool. But ultimately, I don't know. I just thought it was lame. Very lame. Uh, next up, Your One Word by Mr. Evan Carmichael here on YouTube. Uh, congratulations on a million subscribers, by the way, Evan. We've done a few collaborations, and he let me read this book early. And what I got from it is that you need to ask yourself, what's the one word that describes your business or drives your business? What one word describes you and drives you? And for me, I found it's curiosity. Number one, that's my number one value. Without curiosity, I wouldn't have all this energy and drive. Um, so thank thank God it gives me some some type of clarity and it can for you too. Down we go. Stumbling on Happiness by Daniel Gilbert. Um, now, quite frankly, I don't remember a whole lot from this book. Uh, I think I reached out to him to get him on the podcast, but he's, he's, he said he's not willing to take part in podcasts right now. He's like focusing on family and stuff, but that's okay. Uh, otherwise, we could talk more about that. Uh, How Not to Die by Michael Greger. <laughs> now, when I was going through my vegetarian and vegan phase, this is a book that really sort of kicked me into it. However, after about six months, 
Uh, and I started researching veganism a little bit more and nutrition and whatnot. I found that, you know, <laughs> unfortunately, everyone seems to have an agenda. So, you know, a lot of this data and research is designed to fit the plant-based diet. Now, with that said, this book has certainly taught me some great things and it's not all a sham. Um, but uh, it's just not like five stars like I originally thought out to be. Uh, there's some great stuff in there. Like I, uh, as a result, I eat more veggies now. I'm more proactive about that. I'm more proactive about eating my chia seeds and my almonds and my nuts and all that good stuff. It's, it's, it's great. But just, just, just anything you read, especially in the health industry, take it with a grain of salt. The Power of Positive Thinking. I uh, despised it. It was really, really lame. It's it's more for those that are um, uh, religious, perhaps, and not just that, but, I don't know, repetitive, vague, boring, nothing, nothing too revolutionary in my eyes. Next up, we got The Rise of Superman. Uh, now, I listened to the audiobook version of this. I don't tend to retain a uh, memory of, of, of audiobooks as as much as opposed to physical books. That's just me. It might be different for you. Uh, but ultimately, I think the biggest thing I got from this book, The Rise of Superman by Stephen Kotler, uh, was that peak experiences, you know, where you put yourself in danger, maybe you go skateboarding or shit, you have a psychedelic mushroom. Um, you've got to schedule that because if you're tripping balls all the time, then that no longer becomes a tripping balls experience because you're always in the state of tripping balls. You like you need that contrast to exist. Anyway, the dude goes into a lot more about professional athletes. I just got to fix up this microphone. What's going on here? Okay, that should be right. Next up, why evolution is true. Uh, I also read this in the lunchroom of the job I didn't like. Um, and, you know, I'm sure it's a good book, and if you're into evolution and all that, uh, which I am to an extent, like evolutionary psychology, this one, I don't know, uh, at the time, I just, it didn't do a lot for me, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't amazing, so, I don't know, I don't have much to say about that. Ask Gary V. uh, listen to the audiobook of this one, it's got a 4.26 average rating, over about 2,000 ratings. Um, so yeah, as usual, you know, it's Gary Vaynerchuk. If you don't know who the guy is, uh, you're missing out. Um, so yeah, nothing too groundbreaking if you're already watching Gary V, but great guy, great guy. He just, he just makes things so simple. Like he instills confidence into you. If you listen to this audio book, excuse you for my fucking mic. Uh, next up, this one was fantastic. Trust me, I'm lying uh, by Ryan Holiday. This is the author of Ego is the Enemy. And this book was amazing. I love this even more than Ego is the Enemy. Uh, it goes into the shit that really goes on behind the scenes of all these big blogs like Huffington Post uh, and Wall Street Journal, etc., etc. You find it's absolutely bizarre how manufactured these mainstream blogs are. You know, like bloggers behind the scenes have to meet a daily word count or else they, they get the sack, man. So guess what that leads to? Find the fucking read the book to find out, dude. It's crazy. Uh, next up, what's this? Ah, 1,000 True Fans by Kevin Kelly. Now, this is more of an essay. You can read it online. But basically, it's probably the business model of the next 10 years, as my buddy said. And it's, what? who are your 1,000 True Fans? Because if you have 1,000 True Fans that are willing to spend money on everything you release, then bam, you've got like 100K, 200K a year business. Just like that. So focus on getting 1,000 True Fans. You don't need a million subscribers or some bullshit like this. Just get 1,000 fans, man. Uh, true fans. Headstrong by Dave Asprey. Now, uh, yes, there was the butter coffee. He's a butter coffee guy, bulletproof guy. Uh, there was some controversy, you know, back on Joe Rogan about his coffee beans, but whatever. I, I still look up to Dave Asprey as uh, an expert on the subject of biohacking. Uh, very knowledgeable. He's invested hundreds of thousands of dollars into this shit. He's got a, I don't know, a hundred million dollar business or whatever, hundred million dollar and I, I, I love to listen and hear what he has to say and then just take it with a grain of salt. Uh, I've implemented some stuff from this book, Headstrong. Uh, absolutely fantastic read if you're into enhancing your cognitive performance, your focus, uh, and mental clarity. Crusher by Gary Vaynerchuk, self-explanatory. The Psychedelic Explorer's Guide. Um, now, I'm still interested in psychedelics greatly. Uh, however, at the beginning of the year and last year, uh, definitely right into it. So this really helped me when I had my first mushroom trip. 
I actually brought this book with me. I think it's for the LSG trip, but both. Um, and it just gives you some sort of safety guidelines of, of how to how to go about tripping balls. Uh, <laughs> next up is the Wisdom of the Enneagram. Now, this one is controversial. Uh, initially, I was surprised. I'm, I considered myself a very logical and rational guy. Um, but, you know, in Tribe of Mentors by Tim Ferriss, uh, a lot of uh, these interviewed people mentioned the Enneagram. And even Dave Asprey, author of Headstrong, um, mentioned this being, you know, a somewhat very accurate test that may be worth taking seriously. Um, but, you know, then there's guys like Darren Brown on YouTube who debunk all these personality tests. And, you know, how do we know they're just not fucking astrology signs? Like, oh, I'm Aries. Oh, I'm Scorpio. <laughs> the stars can tell me who I am. Uh, that's sort of a bit of a vibe I get from this book. But then again, it's the most accurate motherfucker I've ever read. And not just for my personality, but people around me, my family. And it's just, you know, I can't relate to the other the other personality types. So they've, they've done something here. I don't know what it is, man. I recommend you read it for yourself. Read your personality type according to the Enneagram. See what you think. But I'm just, I'm just skeptical of cold reading techniques. So anyway, the biggest point I got from that book is, Brandon, get the hell out of your head and into your body. Uh, so I can't really argue with that. The Art of Learning by Joshua Watson. Um, you know, I thought it would be more about learning how to learn, but it's kind of just, I don't even know, man. It, it bored me to bits. Recommendation from Tim Ferriss, one of his friends. Uh, but I just, I just didn't enjoy it. I'm sure the guy's, like, the guy's doing well, but I just didn't enjoy it. The Truth, an uncomfortable book about relationships. Oh, boy, this is probably in my top five books of the year. Amazing. Absolutely incredible. Neil Strauss, baby. Author of the game. Read the game, then read the truth, and just see how the transformation pans out. If you're questioning, you know, monogamy or you get into the dating scene, you know, this is like required reading, man. You have a blast. Every It's a fucking page turner, dude. He knows how to tell a story. Uh, this is what really sparked my interest in going into fiction, historical fiction, and, you know, storytelling in general, rather than just the the bulleted points in nonfiction books. Great book, great book. Ah, Elon Musk investing the future audio book. Um, you know, so I just, I, this again, yeah, I listened to this. So I don't remember a whole lot. However, you know, I basically got the vibe of how Elon operates. He's a strict motherfucker. Uh, on the outside, he might appear like, oh, look, I'm going to introduce Tesla's new Model 3 today. Uh, but in his company, fuck, he's like, he's, he's hustling. 80% of his time, is of his time is spent engineering and he's very strict uh, almost sociopathic towards his employees actually like he's he seems to lack some sort of empathy maybe because he's slightly autistic or something but anyway don't take my word for it read the damn book great guy great guy sapiens <laughs> this was all the rage at like the start of the year or end of last year and you know I don't know. I listened to the audiobook of this one. I didn't get much from it, but, you know, everyone's just fucking raging over it. So I think to give this a fair summary or review, I'd have to read the actual paper book again. So I won't go any more further than that. Chasing the Screen by Johan Hardy. Man, there's so many misconceptions about drugs. So many misconceptions, and this clears it all up. If more people would read this book, they'd realize that the war on drugs is a complete failure. And every time you fucking smoke a cigarette or, or drink a beer... Have this book by your side to remind you that you're fucking hypocritical if you're all against drugs and you, you just haven't done your research and you just have beers all the time. Like, fuck me, dude. Like, this this topic enrages me. I'll, we'll move on before I, I blow a gasket. Next up, A Not So Enlightened Youth by Koi Fresco. Fantastic spirituality YouTuber. Check him out. He's got, like, dreadlocks. He used to. Anyway, really cool guy. Um, this is his story. I mean, it's it's okay. I don't have much more to say. Like, he took Xanax and stuff, and he, was, he went to prison, and it's, it's pretty cool, but I think he's he's working on his writing. Anyway. Unlimited Power by Tony Robbins. Uh, now, the, this is killing me. I read this book, and it, it was fantastic. I took away some great lessons, but I can't remember what they were. So, this is something I'm going to have to go back through, but I know it was an, an amazing book. Stealing Fire by Stephen Kotler. Ah, this one was about drugs. Yeah, see, my memory's gone blank on that one too. Uh, great book though. Peak, again, audiobook. I can't fucking remember. Um, didn't engage me too much. On the Road by Jack Kurak. 
Uh, you know, 284,000 ratings. Millions of people have read this. So much hype. I didn't enjoy it. I hated it. It was terrible. It was boring. It was lame. The writing was just like, I did this, then I did that. I wasn't engaged. Terrible book. Wouldn't read again. People would disagree with me, but so be it. Grit by Angela Duckworth. Eh, you know, it's pretty average. Like, be passionate, persevere. You know, as the book says, um... All the best to Angela for all her research and whatnot, but, you know, just, I don't know, all the success principles start to repeat themselves. So if you haven't read books before, then sure, I think you get some value from it, but if you've read plenty of success books, probably not. The Way of the Iceman by Cohen De Jong and Wim Hof. So I interviewed the co-author of uh, Wim Hof's book on my podcast, so watch out for that. Uh, but this explains what the whole Wim Hof method is, how to do it, etc., etc., and a bit of science. Basically, the guy, if you don't know, injected fucking toxins into his body at a doctor's hospital place, you know, that one. And then, you know, using the Wim Hof method, he could get rid of the toxins through, like, fucking breathing techniques. Incredible. Anyway, changing the world, that guy. So Good They Can't Ignore You by Cal Newport. I don't know, don't remember. Eh. Eh. Lame. Uh, Atul Gawande, The Checklist Manifesto. So this was great. Um, he's a surgeon. And he found that just by creating a checklist when they go through surgery, they can prevent so many deaths caused by surgery. Like, the amount of deaths that are caused by accidents in the workplace, in, like, hospitals and medical industry, is phenomenally high. Higher than you think. And by creating a checklist, you can avoid so much of that shit. So, uh, whether you're an entrepreneur or a a fitness athlete or a coach, whatever, you can take concepts from the checklist manifesto and apply it to your own life or business. Whew. The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz are uh, pretty straightforward, extremely important concepts. If you don't have your head around them, then you're missing out. So get around it. The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck by Mark Manson. What can I say? I've created a video for this on this channel, so be sure to subscribe and have a look for the video. Uh, incredible book. Uh, much needed. You know, it's, it's exploded in popularity. Those ratings are just going up and up and up and up. More readers are getting to it. It's on all the shelves around the world. Smarter, Faster, Better by Charles Duhigg. I wasn't engaged by this book. I don't know. It's kind of lame. Um, he's the author of uh, The Power of Habit. So, yeah. Uh, the Inevitable by Kevin Kelly, The 12 te- Technological Forces That Will Shape Our Future. Uh, Kevin Kelly, awesome guy doing amazing things. Um, I listened to the audiobook version again of this, so I didn't actually remember much. I mean, this is a good lesson to me. If I listen to audiobooks, I better choose the right ones. Um, or at least go back through them in the paperback version, because, yeah, fuck, I don't know. Wired for Intimacy, How po- Pornography Hijacks a Male Brain. Now, a lot of you know I'm into NoFap, so naturally I wanted to educate myself on this topic. Now, this guy, I think he's kind of a, a religious guy or a, a priest or, or some kind of pastor type thing. And, you know, it's just an empty, empty book. I wouldn't, I would recommend reading Your Brain on Porn. Uh, not Wide for Intimacy. It's just a really washed out, empty book. I didn't like it. The Everything Store by Jeff Bezos. Uh, again, listen to the audio book version of this. Um, can't remember much. The Body Keeps a Score. We talked about that already. The 10X Rule by Grant Carter. And man, I love listening to this guy, especially through audio. Uh, you know, it's like watching a YouTube video, but I'm watching it through my ears. Uh, basically, fucking 10X of goals. Is that massive goals? Don't give a shit about what anyone thinks. Uh, it's really great for pumping yourself up. Uh, same thing with Be Obsessed or Be Average. You know, you'll find all millionaires obsessed as fuck, dude. Uh, it's their obsession. Anything You Want by Derek Sivers. This guy became famous for his CD baby email where he decided to spice things up. Uh, and he doesn't necessarily grow his business out of control. Like, I don't know, he got it to 3 million, 30 million or some shit like that. And he really talks about just creating a fucking awesome business. It's not all about growing. And with his CD Baby marketing campaign, like, he sent an email to his customers and just made it really, like, witty. Uh, So it's worth uh, giving that a Google. I think that's why people like Derek Sivers. He's also got a blog, by the way. Dan Locke, uh, another one of my favorite guys. Uh, F you money. This book should have so much more popularity. Uh, Incredible. Like, required reading uh, in line with Rich Dad, Poor Dad. So, So, you know, enough said. 
You want to increase your finances? This is the book to go to. Tara Brack. Radical Self-Acceptance. This was a... Recommendation from Tim Ferriss. It's kind of Buddhisty, but with a Western perspective, I guess. I don't know. I, find it, I found it kind of boring. Didn't do much for me. <laughs> I'm sure there's some value in it, but yeah. Influence. We've already been through that. The China Study. Uh, again, I read this after I read How Not to Die by Michael Greger uh, in regards to my vegetarian and vegan diet. Uh, but again, I, I think even this is like... I don't know, you just got to be careful what you read when it comes to the health industry. I've got nothing else to say. The Purple Cow by Seth Godin. Can't remember. Do something different. Drive by Daniel Pink. I don't know, can't remember. The Millionaire Fast Lane by MJ DeMarco. Uh, yeah, brilliant book. Absolutely changed me uh this again is required reading on par with f u money by dan lock and rich dad poor dad mj just tells it how it is we've actually got a short interview thingy on a video i've done for this channel so be sure to check that out uh, and look forward to the full podcast coming out later in 2018 your move the underdog's guide to building your business uh Basically, Ramit Sethi knows exactly what he's fucking talking about. One of the best email marketers in the world. I recommend subscribing to his email list. Uh, the stories he tells is just fantastic. And I, I, I'm i going to use this in 2018 because he knows his shit. Unshakable by Tony Robbins. I uh, didn't like it at all. Not one bit. Wouldn't recommend it. You know, it's Tony Robbins. Woohoo! You know, he knows his shit, right? He's got millions of dollars. He interviewed 50 billionaires or whatever for his first book. But this one's just like a clone. There's there's nothing new in this book. There's nothing groundbreaking. Uh, ultimately, the, the motivation behind this book was to feed a lot of homeless people, I believe. He partnered with some kind of foundation and it's really just a marketing campaign. So, uh, you know, the way I'm talking makes it sound like a sham or something. It's not, but uh, yeah, just be... Just be weary, huh? you know, there's nothing nothing crazy. The Power of Ambition by Jim Rohn. Uh, self-explanatory by the title. He was the mentor of uh, Tony Robbins, by the way. Deep Work by Cal Newport. This taught me... I'm running out of breath. This book taught me to focus in like three-hour blocks, man. Distractions are the enemy. Like I moved all my equipment into... My brother's old room, just so I can avoid all my family out there. Because as soon as you just get one distraction, it fucks you up. And it can potentially take you 10 minutes to get back into that flow state. So, yeah, blocking three hours out during a day. That's what I got from this book. Being Human by Martin Ball. Incredible. So, as you know, I'm really interested in psychedelics. And I reached out to this guy through a recommendation of my mate Tom. And this guy, like, he's, he's worked with a lot of people with the substance 5-MeO-DMT. So that absolutely fascinated me. 5-MeO-DMT apparently goes beyond things like DMT alone. Heavy doses of mushrooms, heavy doses of LSD. Like, 5-MeO-DMT is on another level. And apparently you can pretty much, you know, fucking have one of those massive ego deaths. Uh, it's just like nothing you've ever experienced before. And you'll never be the same again. So... You know, I almost had an opportunity when I was in Hawaii, but it didn't quite pan out. But anyway, um, that's fine. Give me a DMT, something I'm looking forward to trying in the future. Next up, we got Super Intelligence by Nick Bostrom. This was a very technically challenging read. I'd only really recommend this to like engineers and real techie people. So that that was difficult, but I'm sure there's some great stuff in it that's got some profound things about what's what's coming in the future. How to Be a Stoic by Massimo Pigliukai. So we've also interviewed this guy for the podcast. Look forward to it. Uh, he's a university professor. He's been doing stoicism for like, I don't know, multiple years now. And he's wrote a book on it. And it's an absolutely fantastic guide. Stoicism has saved my life to an extent. So since I started a, a couple years ago. So I've got a video on this. Check it out on the channel. Being Infinite. Again, another book by Martin Ball. Uh, Born to Run. Now, there's a lot of, you know, rave reviews about this. I don't know. I just lost interest in it, man. Like, I listened to the audio version. I just wasn't engaged. I don't know whether it was my mental state at the time. 
But uh, I don't know. I just didn't get much from it. But, you know, this <laughs> was published in 2009. And I think it inspired the barefoot running epidemic. Sorry, that's my fucking omelette coming up. Uh, Eat That Frog by Brian Tracy. Fantastic book. Um, you know, just just beware that you could be procrastinating by reading this book when you already know all the procrastination techniques. But this is a nice quick read and will help you save some time. Perennial Seller by Ryan Holiday. Again, Ryan Holiday's books are always great. If you're a creative artist or a struggling artist, this is the book to read. Uh, next up... Hallucinations by Oliver Sacks. I am, as you know by now, I'm fascinated by altered states. And Oliver Sacks was a, not a therapist, but a, I don't know, he had people sit in, a psychiatrist or some shit, he had people sit in at his office and with all these whacked out conditions where they've had a fucked up piece in their mind that makes them perceive the world in strange ways and just all sort of cognitive deficits and things of that nature. So... Fascinating read. Happy by Darren Brown. Love that guy. Love this boy. He's he's the guy that goes around debunking a lot of bullshit uh, on YouTube. He's very famous uh, in Britain for being like, what is he, a mentalist? And this is his take on happiness. So a lot of it has stoic themes, but the, just 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 the way he writes, his his level of intelligence really resonates with me. So I love this book. It should it deserves so many more reads, man. Uh, attached now this 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 person pretty much argues that being independent isn't everything like you you need a relationship with someone else to bring things out in yourself or some shit uh but after discovering the red pill i'm not so sure about this uh you know i'm not i'm very skeptical now of the mainstream relationship books in the world today the five love languages the seven principles of making marriage work despite the science uh, things of that nature. After swallowing the red pill, man, like, you know, you, it just all comes into question because pretty much everyone today is operating in a framework where we're sort of addressing the symptoms, not not the root cause of things. So you get people like, oh, you just need to fucking communicate more and you can have an amazing relationship. But no, like, you need to understand the root of all this shit, like intergender dynamics. If you haven't looked into the red pill simply because you're too scared or you think it's bullshit or, or things of that nature, then clearly you haven't looked into it far enough. Uh, you know, initially I was skeptical, I get it, uh, but once you really delve into it and start empathizing with what these guys are saying, you, you see it for what it is and you can see the benefits that it's actually creating in the world and other people's relationships, both for the girl and the guy. So, red pill, get around it. Can't avoid it forever. You know, shit's going to happen and... We'll be like in 10 years, but told you so, dude. I mean, you would have been prepared for this shit if you just read about the red pill now. Lying by Sam Harris. Uh, yeah, so we talked a bit about this at the beginning of the video. Uh, this is Sam Harris's philosophy on lying. He basically says that even white lies, we shouldn't tell them. We should always tell the truth. It always works out in your favor is his argument. Uh, I'm still unsure about this. Uh... I'd have to go go through more. I think uh, one person countered him by saying, you know, what about being a parent and lying to your child about Santa Claus? Like, do we just tell him Santa's real? And I don't know, I feel like Sam kind of dodged the question. I can't remember what his response was exactly, but it wasn't satisfying for me. So I think there's a few holes we still got to work through in terms of always telling the truth. I mean, by nature, we fucking... Lying's inevitable, but... You know, there's, I think there's so many scenarios where sometimes you have to to lie, as is, is, is crazy that is. Yeah, I don't know. That's a big philosophical debate anyway. The God Delusion by Richard Dawkins. <laughs> Titus, pretty self-explanatory. Um, yeah. Ayn Rand, Atlas Shrugged. <laughs> Lame, didn't like it, hated it. The Moral Landscape by Sam Harris. Now, this is great. Uh, the world's been waiting for this for quite some time. There's all these arguments that you can't have morals without God or a creator or a religion. Uh, but you definitely can. So, you know, Sam goes into how science can determine human values. I think it's a great book. Fantastic. The Upstarts by Brad Stone. 
how Uber, Airbnb, and all that shit came about. You find that a lot of work in behind the scenes. You know, we just see Uber and Airbnb pop up, like, ooh, just like that, bam. Uh, but no, there's a lot of shit that goes goes on uh, behind the scenes, and the legal implications of that are, are quite interesting. Tribes, uh, don't remember much. Diary of Suicide by Wallace E. Baker. Now, when I read this, no, I wasn't suicidal. However, I was in a very down state, and I just thought it might be nice to resonate with someone, someone's writings. Uh, and so, yeah, that was quite fascinating. This guy called Wallace, yes, he did he did kill himself. He's, he's from, I don't know, the 1900s in New York in Manhattan. It's quite gloomy, so, you know, it just shows another side of, of human existence. So, not for the faint of heart, but there it is. It's a nice short read. Are You Dreaming? A Comprehensive Guide. Uh, lucid Dreaming. Yeah, amazing. This is one of my old pastimes. Like, I love lucid dreaming, even though I don't do it actively lately. Uh, it takes a lot of commitment, but when you do have lucid dream, it is incredible. This guy, uh, you know, he's probably one of the most knowledgeable guys in the world about the subject. He's even tattooed Am I Dreaming on his wrist or some shit um, as, a, as a dream cue. <sighs> He goes into like uh, different substances you can take to help induce lucidity. Uh, just just everything from A to Z that you need to know about lucid dreaming. Tryptamine Palace. Uh, again, this was another the book on 5-MeO-DMT. Quite fascinating. Uh, Love by Elaine D. Bodden. Uh, this is just a, a, nice, a nice book on storytelling about, you know, being cheated on and then finding a new relationship and just sort of presenting the... Ab- absurdity of the cycles of life like you know you go into a relationship thing that's going to last forever then bam you get cheated on or it ends or whatever happens and then da 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 you're depressed as fuck maybe try to kill yourself and then you know things start panning out you find a new girl or a new chick and then bam you're in another relationship and it's kind of absurd but the storytelling is great and if you've you've experienced a breakup it's a great uh, great book to read you can sort of relate and just be like wow that, this is the human experience but does it have to be I don't know um, Albert Camus, The Myth of Sisyphus. So this is like Existentialist 101, Nihilism 101. This is a book you read when you experience an existential crisis where you realize that everything is fundamentally meaningless. Um, at the time when I was deep in my crisis, this book did not help me. Imagine Sisyphus happy. Well, pfft, pushing a boulder up a hill over and over again. What the fuck? I mean, but what, what other choice do you have, right? That's kind of where I'm at now. Um, anyway, that's a, it's a big philosophical discussion. The Art of Travel, ah, it was okay, by Elaine D. Bodden as well. Friedrich Nietzsche, Twilight of the Idols. Nietzsche, you are my bread and butter. You are my soup. You are my kettle full of happiness. Uh, Friedrich, man, we would have some great discussions. Uh, philosopher, German philosopher from the 1900s. Uh, 19th century, and man, this is a guy that proclaimed God is dead. So, you know, obviously a controversial character, uh, commonly misunderstood, but it's popular to say he's misunderstood. Ooh, ooh, Nietzsche is so misinterpreted. Uh, <laughs> but amazing guy, like read his lines. Uh, he does a lot of aphorisms, like just short statements of prof- profundity. Uh, while some people may consider that vague and like, oh, anyone can write that, still, I don't know, I resonated with it. I love it. It's as irrational as that sounds. Um, great book, great book. Human nature, man. Alibaba, uh, yeah, Jack Ma, funny fucking character, dude. Like, he, he he doesn't consider himself smart or intelligent. He's just put in the work. He's a normal guy. And he just, just bam, he's built a billion-dollar business, Alibaba. That's what all the fucking Shopify users use. They use this thing called AliExpress. You buy, I don't know, pen holders for 50 cents and sell them for five bucks on Facebook ads. Bam. Sold for happy. Terrible book. Hated it. Lame. Empty, stupid, and at the end of the book, he hinges the value on, you know, he says, if there's one thing you get from this book, then it's that there's a creator. And I just thought it was fucking bullshit um, just to, to hinge your book on that. Ridiculous. I read all that shit, and then and then there's that. Uh, just, uh, ah, congratulations if it makes you happy, wonderful. But it didn't make me happy. Not that I should expect to be happy, but that's kind of the message of your book, right? Solve for happy. Anyway, that makes me enraged. I'm sure you're a great, great, a great guy, Mo. The Antichrist by Nietzsche. Again, love that guy. One of the most profound fucking thinkers in the whole of entire existence. Maybe even more than Einstein, but I don't know how you compare the intelligence of people. Love yourself like your life depends on it. Uh, this is recommended to... Uh, fra- 
This was recommended to me by my buddy going through a really hard time. He was very hard time. Um, and so he found comfort in this book. For me, I found it quite empty. You know, sometimes when you just need to read a book at the right time in your life, uh, it doesn't mean a book's necessarily bad, but maybe it just wasn't the right time for you. So yeah, I don't know. I didn't get much from that. Self-Reliance by Ralph Waldo Emerson. Uh, I actually found this a very difficult read, despite its 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 uh, praise it gets from even people like Nietzsche. Like people love all these philosophers love Ralph Waldo Emerson. Um, I I just I think I need to read it again. I'm sure this is great. I just need to absorb it more. The Prophet by Khalil Gibran. Uh, this is like the religious book for people that aren't necessarily religious, or it's the book for all religious people, no matter what religion you're of, that you can relate to. It's kind of like the Bible of Bibles. <laughs> so, yeah, great read. The Fall by Albert Camus. This is, again, the author of The Myth of Sisyphus. Um, the Fall, which one was that? Yeah, that one That one I, I want to read again. Um, it, it takes a few reads, I think, to really pick up on the, the themes in that book. But I, I got the basic gist, and I like this sort of eerie vibe. Uh, essential. Uh, the minimalists, nothing profound. Um, you know, these guys get a lot of hate for not doing anything profound. Some people call them egotistical, like Ryan McAdamus and Joshua Fields Milburn. But I don't know, I don't really have anything against these guys. I didn't find them to be egotistical until I read the reviews. So I don't know what the fuss is about. Just guys presenting minimalism. I don't see what all the, the hype is, man. Uh, models attract women through honesty. Now, this one's by Mark Manson. Now, given I don't actually have much experience in the dating or pickup game, I've delved into it a little bit. Like, you know, like, got a girl's number for the first time. Woohoo! You know, that's that's quite a, a confidence boost and a, and a thrill to do that and just to start sort of uh, teasing girls a little bit. Um, but, uh, so I'm not in a position to be recommending dating books or anything. But, however, I'll just share my thoughts anyway. Uh, love this book. Five stars. And if you've looked into just regular pickup techniques and you've looked into real social dynamics, this kind of goes a step further. Um, you know, he's Mark Manson isn't, he's the author of Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck, by the way. But he spent like two years picking up women like every day, five days a week or some shit at bars and trying out different things. But what I like about Mark Manson's approach is it's, it's just a little bit more genuine. So I'll let you read it for yourself, but I consider this essential reading. Even if in your relationship, by learning game, I believe that holds many, many benefits. No more Mr. Nice Guy. Another essential read for men. You know, like, modern day masculinity is just a load of, like, toad shit. Like, we're all fucking, like, feminized, dude. Like, we're all too nice. And, you know, this is a result of uh, feminism, you know, the third wave feminism is fucking like misdirecting, it's confusing, it's a piece of shit, I don't like feminism at all and I'm not afraid to say that, because it truly is a piece of shit uh, when you get down to it uh, sure, you know, I think it started with with reasonable intentions, but it just sort of really got out of hand and it's been more damaging than it has been positive for the world so, especially for guys as well it's just gonna really fucked us over um, so, you know this is essential reading for every guy that can improve the lives of both men and women. Um, because by becoming an actual fucking, like a guy who can set his own fucking boundaries, can be confident in what he's doing, to not have to rely on girl, on a, on a girl as is one and everything, that just, you come across as clingy as fuck. That's not healthy for the relationship. It's not healthy for you. It's not healthy for the girl. So, you know, basically grow up here, dude. Um, Ro Robert A. Glover is a, uh, not a psychologist, but like a fucking, I don't know, a therapist or some shit. He's had a lot of um, clients in which he addresses relationship issues between men and women. And what he's found is that all these fucking guys are just, they're too nice. They're just, they think they have to do everything uh, a woman wants them to do, and they just don't make a stand for themselves. So as a result, we're just fucking in our bedrooms, fapping away, and we just we just suck at being men. You know, it's 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 just a real topic that's been on my mind recently. Uh, again, the red pill, fucking swallow it now, or else you, you you're gonna run into shit later on in life if you don't swallow it now. Like you you can't avoid it, dude. Like it's it's inevitable. Avoid it all you want, but it will be stored in your body as pent up fucking trauma especially it all come out when you get cheated on or 
uh, you know, relationship doesn't work out how it's meant to, you're not getting laid, uh, you know, you, you lose confidence in yourself, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, ah, that hides me up. Next up, The Stranger by Albert Camus, a very famous book, half a million ratings on Goodreads. Um, and this is again by the author of the myth of Sisyphus. So this is an interesting book that uh, it has many nihilistic and existentialist themes. Like the, I, I, I won't spoil it for you. I, I won't spoil it for you. Uh, you can read it yourself. Uh, uh, excuse me. That's my omelet coming up. The Lonely City. So throughout a lot of this year, I have experienced a lot of loneliness. You know, it's, it's driven me nuts. To be honest, I'm feeling much better now. However, uh, yeah, I read this when I was feeling super isolated. Um, so this 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 chick talks about loneliness in like uh manhattan she lives there and describes some of the eerie sort of feeling of what it's like to be alone in a city where there's tons of people i mean civilization is just incredible like we're all closer together but we're just more alone than fucking ever it, it's 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 crazy and when you start looking into evolutionary psychology and how civilizations are built, why they're built, you sort of come to an understanding of why that's the case. Uh, but she goes into studying four artists who have presented loneliness themes. That was, eh, I don't know, it didn't vibe with me with me a lot, but there you go. Uh, next up, The Stranger in the Woods, The Extraordinary Story of the Last True Hermit. Incredible story. So for 27 fucking years, this guy out in Maine in Canada, uh, he sets up his little camp, in this forest by himself at the age of 18 or 19 he fucks off he doesn't really fit into society but he's a seemingly normal guy he fucks off and he just lives in the forest for 27 years by himself how did he survive well i'll let you find out dude it's an absolutely incredible story and this guy was only caught and you know he was only caught in 2013 for some of the bizarre stuff that's been going on great book this this one like the award of the fucking year or whatever for being a, a dope book uh, Frederick Nietzsche, man alone with himself. Uh, yet again, I fucking love Nietzsche, uh, and the amount of profound wisdom in his words is just absolutely insane. This guy was way ahead of his time. Um, great book. Next up, open by Andre Agassi. So this guy, I don't, I'm not into sports, but, uh, I got this recommendation from Tim Ferriss, who I love very much. So naturally I read this book and yeah, it's the story of a, an athlete, a tennis player who becomes like fucking world champion. Uh, but the crazy thing is this guy hates tennis. He's never, never loved it. Yet he became the best at it in the world and dedicated a whole life to fucking tennis. Even today, he's like a tennis coach. Um, so the amount of shit that happened behind the scenes is quite crazy. I mean, he's a really, really quite a normal guy with the, 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 the difference being like at the age of fucking three, his dad like strapped a, a, a tennis racket or some shit to his, his, his wrist, taped it up and just fucking like when he was a baby in a cult would just get him to hit a ping pong ball or some shit. Uh, you know, just crazy. Like the amount of commitment from parents at that young age, crazy social, why our brains are wired to connect again. When I was feeling lonely, I thought I better dive into what the importance is of socializing. Cause I've, I've never really prioritized that in my life, but I, I've, I've grown to become aware that it's, you know, just as important as perhaps sleep, you know, diet and exercise, man. Uh, we're designed to connect. Great book. Food rules, uh, very straightforward rules on eating well. Um, you know, most of the shit in this this niche is fucked up. You got to be careful. Again, you got to be careful with this book too. But uh, for me, I found it quite uh, reasonable. The Metamorphosis, Franz Kafka, really fucked up story about a guy that turns into a bug. Um, <laughs> a lot of people love this book. I thought it was. I thought it was good. I thought it was good. Uh, I'll leave it at that. I thought it was good. It was a good book. Fear of Trembling, uh, this is by Soren Kierkegaard, considered one of the first existentialists that realize everything is fucking fundamentally meaningless. Uh, his take on it is, you know, he turns to God. Uh, a lot of, I found that even like Leo Tolstoy, he went through the same shit as I did and also turned to God despite his rational thinking. Uh, and maybe even Dostoyevsky, uh, but I'm still reading him right now, so I can tell you what he did. But uh, it, it's, it's quite bizarre, and I'm starting to believe maybe there's some kind of merit in the leap of faith, as he called it. The Kierkegaardian leap of faith. You know, you, you, you just can't fucking rationalize everything. And paradoxes are inherent to life. You, you, can't, you can't undo paradoxes, which is, you know, no matter how much you think about the meaning of life, you're always going to run into paradoxes. So at the end of the day, even if this leap of faith isn't into God or a creator... 
essentially it, you, you're left with no choice but to make that leap of faith in yourself, for example. So that's, it was a difficult read. I didn't get much from it, but there's my thoughts on the leap of faith, which is the idea behind the book. Sam Harris, Waking Up, A Guide to Spirituality Without Religion, uh, self, self-explanatory. self I love Sam Harris. He gets some hate, but like, I mean, sure, he's got controversial ideas, but they're incredible. Like, people don't like to hear the fucking truth, man. They do not like to hear the truth. Uh, and so it's no wonder he gets criticism, but the way his mind works, I think it's incredible. Like, it's just straight up, no bullshit. Like, it makes sense. It makes fucking sense. Civilization and its discontents. This, again, is in my top five. This may not resonate with some of you. Don't just read it because I read it. I've noticed a lot of people, like, just looking at the books I read and then reading them because they think it will make them better. Like, but but think about it. Like, why are you reading a book? My biggest recommendations are to... Maybe I should get to this at the end of the video. But, you know, read what you're interested in, man. Read what's relevant to you at the time of your life. So... You know, for me, this this made a profound difference in my life, and it's something Ty Lopez recommends as one of his top books of all time. But the, it's truly profound when it comes to civilization and human flourishing. Sigmund Freud, sure he's controversial, but like, man, I just read his introduction to uh, psychoanalytics or whatever, his lectures, and, you know, the guy gets a lot of criticism for having these profound ideas that never lived up to the science, and it was reductionist, and you couldn't really prove this shit. It was all in, yeah, you know? But the guy admits it in his books, man. Like, it's, it's not like he wasn't aware of his own vagueness and his ideas. But he gave us a lot of shit to work with. And believe it or not, this guy has had a massive influence in, in modern day thinking. Like, defense mechanisms, uh, acting out, and uh, Freudian slips, etc., etc. Massive influence. So, fucking well done to the guy. He got some things wrong, but he also got some things fucking right. And this book, he gets a lot right. Post Office by Charles Bukowski. This is basically a depressed motherfucker who lives his life on alcohol and dies an early death and smokes cigarettes and fucks chicks uh, like no tomorrow. It doesn't give a shit. Uh, just like a, a terrible guy. Uh, with that said, I do admire uh, just the the way... yeah, Him being himself, basically. So this guy got a lot of notoriety. Probably not for the right reasons, but nonetheless, he became famous his writings became famous and i think it's incredible especially when you're feeling nihilistic uh, you can relate to a lot of what he's saying just not giving a shit uh beyond belief by jenna miscavige hill uh so this was a story this chick here she was born and bred as a scientologist um so this is a secret life inside scientology and my harrowing escape yes my friends escape from scientology um so you know <laughs> I don't know really where to start with this, but it definitely changed my idea of Scientology. You know, I went to one of those Scientology centers in my local city here. I did the personality test. I held the metal electronic buzzer things. I did the e-meter readings. Um, anyway, that's a story for another day. But I read this book and it really changed my thoughts about it before I got too deep into it. So <laughs> this is definitely worth a read. And it, and it definitely shed some light on just how powerful belief systems are on humans and what they can do. Especially from an early upbringing as well. Profound. The Existentialist Cafe by Sarah Bakewell. Uh, so this is like um, a discussion between Sartre and Albert Camus and Simone de Beauvoir, which were existentialists from like the 1940s during the World War II times. That's basically where the existential movement came out of. You know, a lot of people pre presented these feelings of meaninglessness, like Kurt Vonnegut and all these big characters, maybe George Orwell, all these guys. And... Uh, you know, it's it's meant to be based at this restaurant where they all talk about existential themes. But I, I didn't get whether the restaurant thing came into the book. It was more just a presentation of Heidegger's ideas and Herschel's and Sarch's and etc. Cetera, et cetera. Anyway, if you're into existentialism, that is a great book to read. It's a long one, though. Uh, man, is Santa Hot's getting tired. Oh. <sighs> Sex at Dawn by Christopher Ryan. Oh, my God. You know, I don't even know if there's room for my top five anymore, but this has got to be somewhere up there. Uh, I will never be the same person again. Now, a lot of people are scared of this book, particularly those in relationships, those who subscribe to the idea of having one soulmate for the rest of their life, those who just subscribe to monogamy. Uh, now, this book doesn't necessarily say 
that monogamy is wrong. It does not say that at all, but I think people come in with an assumption that that is the case. Uh, if anything, if you're a smart, rational, logical dude that wants to improve your life, you will read this fucking book. I mean, it's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Um, you know, again, it's another one of those pills to swallow that if you don't do it now, you're going to be hitting yourself later on in life. So, Sex at Dawn, uh, it just completely changed me. Definitely changed me. Kurt Vonnegut and Slaughterhouse Five. Now, I didn't actually enjoy this book as much as I would have liked to. Uh, I think it's important not to come into book with heavy expectations, which I didn't, so that was great. Um, but yeah, basically, Kurt, you know, is, is a very, very famous writer, uh, very praised, and you know, I enjoyed his book to somewhat an extent, but not as much as I thought I would. So he describes some depictions of scenes in, like, the, the train carts of World War II and how fucked up it is. There's people, like, shoveling shit out the window because, you know, what are you going to do if you're stuck in, for a, in, in a train cart for three days with 30, 40, 50 other people in the same vicinity and not let out, man? Anyway, apparently there's some themes of the fourth dimension that I didn't pick up on that my friend mentioned to me, so I might have to read it again. Anyway, Sigmund Freud, introductory to his lectures, mentioned this earlier. Uh, great read. Tribe of Mentors by Timothy Ferris. Uh, <laughs> what can I say? If you like books, you're probably familiar with Tim Ferriss. Uh, this is just a, a whole collection of questions Tim has asked mentors, athletes, businessmen of their best like life advice. Uh, so yeah, great read. Just recently finished reading it. The Lessons of History by Will and Arya Durant. This is a book recommendation from Ty Lopez, one of his be biggest, best recommendations. And it's like 5,000 years of history compressed into one book. Now, Will Durant, I think he says that, you know, of course, you can't just sum up lessons of 5,000 years in just one little short 100-page book. However, he tries to anyway. And yeah, you know what the ultimate lesson that I got from that was at the end of the book is, again, it comes back to find meaning and put it into your own life. I mean, that's that's all all there is. You, you just got to put meaning into your own life, even if everything is inherently meaningless. You know, civilization, what progress, if you think about it, what progress have we actually made and are we making? So what about artificial intelligence? So what about the internet? So what about fucking Tesla driving cars? Like, what progress are we actually making? Like, we're making everything easier, but so what? Okay, it becomes easier, we become lazier, or maybe we become happier, but do we actually become happier? I don't think so. I don't think so. I mean, I suppose you could argue like, well, you have food, you have shelter, you have transport, surely that makes you happier, but then, I don't know, fucking look around at the millionaires who are depressed as fuck. I mean, and then, then look at these little villages over in South America where the kids are like, woo! and they're just significantly happier, Papua New Guinea. I mean, it's crazy, like, and they don't have all these comforts, man. Just, just collectively, you know, we're not, I don't believe we're really making any, any progress, but like, it's, the illusion of progress is enough to satisfy men, so we may as well make progress, which comes down to putting meaning into our own lives. Yeah, let, let just, just just let that sink in for a moment. It's it's really fucked up what I said there, but uh, it might take you an existential crisis or two to to figure out what I'm really saying there. Um, and last of all, <coughs> the Rational Male by Rollo Tomasi. My God, again, I'm not going to give you any more on this red pill start red pill stuff, but this is the place to fucking start, dude. The Rational Mail. If you have not read this book, you are missing out. If there's one book you read, well, it's a big claim, but if there's one book you read, read this fucking book. Uh, change me. Changed me. So, without further ado, there you go. There's my book list of 109 books. Uh, yeah, what else can I say? This has been a long video. And I hope to see you... In me book club. Did I mention that? Yeah. Link in the description. Join us on the journey. And without further ado, Merry Christmas. So that's it, guys. Thank you for watching the video. Again, remember to sign up to the book club in the description below. Uh, and also, you've waited till the end of the video, so I could. Or well, you've skipped here, but whatever. <laughs> 
three questions you, you should ask yourself before reading a book. You know, what makes me angry is people just reading books because I've read them. Who, who gives a shit? Like, think about why you're reading, you know? The thing that matters when it comes to reading is what did you learn? And you know what? You're not going to learn anything if you're not engaged. So it's not about just taking point blank book recommendations from me or anyone else. Uh, you want to go through, you know, a process of asking these three questions. So number one is, let me see here. Why do you want to read? Okay, I know for me, it's purely out of curiosity. I want to expose myself to subjects that have the potential to impact my life early on and set me up for later in life. So this, for example, is why I will, you know, stumble upon books that relate to red pill psychology, for example, uh, and, you know, the dating scene. I'm 22, I'm young. Why not learn all this shit from older and wiser people now about relationships and dating? So that's, that's one subject I'm heavily invested in. Another is uh, evolutionary psychology, like all these evolutionary mismatches in society today. I want to know how civilization got here, and I want to know how maladapted we are to this current environment, and how I can best you know, improve my life by making certain changes. So for example, I've read books and I now, I don't know where they are, but I own this pair of glasses. They're like biohacking glasses that filter out uh, blue light and also junk light. And you know, you don't hear much about that in in 2017 because it's just it's very new so that's the sort of stuff i'm into and i i come at that purely out of curiosity for bettering my life now while i'm still young uh so follow your curiosity and naturally you'll 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 stumble into these su subjects but you know for you your reason for reading might be different maybe you want to build a million dollar business and so you gravitate towards business focused books like 100 percent that's what mj uh DiMarco, the author of a millionaire fast lane recommends so, you know, it really depends what your reasoning is. Why do you want to read? That will change what book recommendations you should consider. The second is the second is who do you admire? So I don't care who this is, whether it's an artist or an influencer or an author. Um, make a list. <laughs> make a list and then A, read their books and B, have a look. Well, have a look at what books they read. So, for example, I love a Friedrich Nietzsche, a philosopher. I love his books, uh, but the way I can get more books that I may enjoy and may benefit from uh, are the books he's read. So, I know, according to Wikipedia, that Friedrich Nietzsche was influenced by Dostoevsky. So, what am I going to do? I'm going to head over to Dostoevsky on Google and type in what books he's written. And then, so for example, right now I'm reading Notes from the Underground by Dostoevsky. Um, so this is just another way to sort of figure out what books may resonate with me rather than just sort of arbitrarily picking them. There's nothing wrong with arbitrarily picking them because sometimes that can expose you to new shit, but you're probably just going to increase your chances of finding books that you, you love and that engage you by asking who it is that I admire and what do they read. Uh, the third question you should be asking yourself is, what am I interested in? Okay, I mean, just as simple as that, dude. If you're not interested in a book, you're not going to be engaged and you won't get anything from it. You know, I I've read over 250 books now and that is a lesson I've learned. I used to read a lot of shitty, I don't know, books I, I thought I had to read. Um, and reading what you think you have to read, it isn't exactly the best strategy. Sure, it might, might be nice to push yourself sometimes to read what the world considers staples, uh, but you know what? Maybe in a few years' time, you might end up reading that anyway because you've had a lot of life experiences that have changed you, and you now realize the importance of said subject. So, you know, a while back, I wasn't interested in the dating scene. You know, it just, it just I don't know, it didn't interest me, but uh, now it does. So now I'm reading those books that you're meant to read. So, you know, don't be in, in any big rush necessarily to read those staples. Just focus on what you're currently interested in and read it. Because trust me, your interests will likely change like my hat, like mine have, especially at the age of 22. So there you have it. Uh, if you, you know, ask these questions and there happens to be some books on the books I've gone through today in this video that resonate with you, then by all means, go ahead and uh, read them. So I've actually, <laughs> I haven't done it yet, but I think what I might do is compile my top 10 books. I'll try my hardest. Top 10 books I've read this year, and I'll put Amazon links in the description below. 
Now, uh, that's a great way of supporting me and the channel. If you buy a book through that link, Amazon will give me a little commission uh, on no cost to you. So, uh, yeah, that's awesome. And even if you don't buy one of the books in the top 10, even if you click the link and search another book on Amazon, I'll still get a, uh, I'll still get a commission. So, yeah, thank you for your support. I don't care. Comment, like, um, and, and, and you know what? Why don't we leave it on a good note and say, hey, uh, if there's another type of video like this you want to see from me, uh, I'm taking a short break from the book summaries. I don't know where I'm going with that, but please, I like doing videos like this, getting on camera and talking about books, everything related to books. So if you have a query for a video topic, then comment below. Look forward to reading comments. Thanks. Bye. Merry Christmas.